Hello, in this video I'd like to show you how to set up Atari 5200 on RetroArch. And I'm going to be showing you how to set it up in Linux, but you can use the same technique to get it to work on Windows, Android, or any other operating system. First, I'd like to show you something. You're going to need to open a browser and type in Atari System ROMs Download. You're going to find a website that has a zip file that has five ROM files that you're going to need and you're going to put these in your BIOS folder. Now to get into your config folder for RetroArch you want to hit Control H on your home folder and go to .config. Double click on RetroArch and alright this is a new install here so I haven't put the BIOS folder in there yet. I'm going to move my BIOS folder over here now double click this and go into it I'm going to show you these five files these are the five files that are going to be included in the archive so make sure it has these file names you see 2600 and 7800 by contrast only have one file and putting these files in this folder is not going to make it work right away but I'm going to show you what to do You want to load RetroArch, you want to go to the settings menu and go to directory, which, which is at the bottom. You want to click on system BIOS, click this first folder, that's just your config one, and then scroll down to BIOS and click that. And you want to click use this directory. That's it, that's all you have to do. Next thing you want to do is go back into RetroArch and download yourself a core if you haven't done that already. You can go through the online updater or just load core. This is the only one I'm going to download right now because it's all I'm going to demo. I already downloaded the database in my last video so all you should need should be the core and the database. Next you're going to go to import content scan directory and you're going to navigate to the folder that has the ROMs in it. So I'm going to say scan this directory. Scanning finished it. It goes a lot faster on PC than it does on Android usually. Okay we're going to take a quick look at that folder. No thumbnail available. You're probably going to want to do something about your thumbnail setup, so let's take care of that really quick. Go to User Interface and Appearance. This is all you. So, this is also where you can do something to change your theme if you like. I like this one a lot. Okay, thumbnails. I'm going to leave those on box art. Second thumbnail. I'm going to set that to title. No, screenshot, not title screen. Now if I go here and look at 5200, you'll just see everything's blank. What you want to do is go to Online Updater and Playlist Thumbnails Updater and hit Enter. This should run through these very quickly. I usually just go back to the main menu to make sure I don't hit something else on accident. Once these are thumbnailed, they look a lot nicer, but there's almost always going to be missing thumbnails. And there's almost always going to be ROMs that don't show up because they had a bad CRC or something like that. It doesn't mean they're not going to load. You can load them manually. And if you load them manually and get them to work, you can favorite them. It's real easy to do. Right now though I just want to show you what this looks like with the pictures. A lot nicer now. Okay we're going to go ahead and try the game Berserk and I'm going to show you why this isn't going to work. Okay Atari computer memo pad. Let's see here I got my menu key configured. 
I'm gonna go to options this is one thing you've got to do is go down to Atari system change that to 5200 after that you're just gonna to want to reset huh it automatically reset okay well I've already configured this other thing but I'm gonna show you when you first start this up you're not gonna get the game at all you're gonna get a different screen you're still gonna get a blue screen because it's gonna say it can't find the ROM so I'm gonna walk you through this and show you how to do this you wanna hit F1 and you want to click resume up here now the keys on my joystick it's an Xbox generic one B and Y B is forward and Y is backwards I'm gonna show you this you want to go to emulator configuration okay configure directories directories with Atari software all you have to do is click on this and you have to navigate to the BIOS folder. I'm already in the BIOS now, so I'm just gonna hit space to select current folder. You wanna hit space again, cause that also activates fast forward. So I'm gonna use Y to back out of this, and I'm gonna go down and click save configuration file. Okay, system ROM settings. You say find ROM images in a directory and you're going to navigate to that folder again. Space is select current directory. Just hit that key, hit it again. I'm going to use Y to back out of this. Save your configuration file. I almost forgot that second step. You want to hit your menu key and then go to close content and just rerun. Then you're going to get this screen. So if you get the blue screen before this saying that it can't find the operating system, I just showed you the steps you need to do to be able to find your operating system. The next problem you're going to have is even though you set the controller up, none of the keys on your controller actually start anything. So you're going to want to hit the menu combo again and do this. You scroll all the way down here, click on controls, and go to port 1 controls. Nope, that's not it. Let me back out of this real quick. Okay, maybe that is it. Ah, yeah, that is it. You want to click device type retro pad up at the top. Move this down to Atari joystick and click that. Back out of this menu. You're going to go down here to overrides and you're going to click save core overrides. Now optionally, you can turn on video shaders. You want to go to load shaders GLSL. I'm going to show you the best one in my opinion. Go to HQX and HQ4X. You want to go to save and then down to save core preset. Back out of these menus, go down to overrides, save core override again. Then that means every time you start these from now on you're gonna get you're gonna get 4x filtering automatically you might decide you don't want it because it it doesn't preserve the retro feel as much looks kind of funky on the text and everything now that you change the controller over to Atari joystick you can just press start and it should launch why is it not working that's why okay after you change this to Atari joystick you want to go up to this and make sure you go to save core remap file that way every time you load something with that core you're gonna get the Atari joystick controls now hit start I'm not gonna play this for too long I just want to show you how it works Intruder alert, intruder alert. The humanoid must not escape. Chicken fight my 
Icon robot. The Atari 2600 version of this game doesn't have any talking in it. The 5200 version is superior, it's closer to arcade perfect than the other version. I'm going to go ahead and close this out now, but you want to scroll through these and look at some other stuff. I still have had a problem getting some of these to start, but for the most part, with the controls and everything I just showed you, it works perfect. Okay, I didn't say I was very good at this, so I'm just going to quit while I'm ahead and try something else. Oh, what the heck, let's try Robotron. guys hmm I don't like they seem to be doing that wow that is the most I have sucked at anything no I've probably actually sucked worse what am I talking about Okay, on that note, I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. I just wanted to basically demo this and show you. This is how you get Atari 5200 to work on RetroArch and RetroArch's cross-platform. So once you get it to work on there, you get it to work on everything. Thanks a lot for watching my video, and I'll see you in the next one.